Hey, this is Brett D from Fire of Aries, and you are listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hey, how are you? What's up? How are you doing? I'm all right, man. Thank you. Where are you located? Oh, what's happening with my camera? Here we go. That'll work. This work? Yeah, that's perfect. Nice. Thanks for taking the time. Where are you located? I'm in the Nashville, Tennessee area. Oh, nice. Yeah, what about you? I'm in Richmond, Virginia, so not too far. Not too, not too far apart. No. Far. Everything How good? Levels. Levels okay on your end? You can hear me okay? A little bit more would be great if you can do it. Of course, yeah. Let me put that a little bit. All right, probably get closer. As long as the mic close enough yeah yeah i think you're good okay cool is this uh is this a, a a video podcast or is this audio only or so it's mostly audio um, okay most of our traffic is apple and spotify but i nice. do the video just for those who like the video portion of it it goes up on youtube nice but by far you know the uh majority of consumption is audio it's audio got it well let's dig in dude cool so let's talk about uh fire of aries Let's talk about this Let's, band, uh, project, whatever the, this is. Whatever it is. So for those not familiar, can you there's give a, us... There's a lot that's not familiar. Yeah, with. well, let's let's educate them. Give me the two-sentence elevator pitch. Fire of Aries is simply this. It's a metal rock country band, artist, whatever, uh, that is simply making music that's heavy melodic and has some sort of cinematic storyline behind it very uh visual storytelling through through music uh that's uh that's what this is i mean it's it's definitely still evolving i'm still trying to you know put different pieces together to see if it fits but it's just got to be heavy it's got to be melodic and it's you know it's got to have some some meaning behind it that's what right. i do so let's let's start there. You said heavy. I'm looking at the uh, the poster behind you, and for those not watching, oh. it's a Metallica poster. Yeah. I definitely find some thrashy elements to it as well. At least, I mean, I've heard "Kiss from a Rose," and it, it seems like you've done. I, I don't know. There's definitely some thrash elements to it as well, and that makes sense yeah. now looking at your poster. Yeah. So we'll, we'll 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 start with "Kiss from a Rose." Like this whole that whole song has been years in the making for me i'm talking about probably before i I even played guitar i just always liked that song i always thought from even a small small child you know age that like this is a catchy song i like it right and it just so happened to kind of coincide with the batman forever you know released back in 95 and i was a kid back then and you know i was most boys are batman fans to an extent most not all uh, and that that uh, song just always has been with me ever since. And you know, now that I've matured in age and as a musician, I'm like, okay, it's time for me to to shoot my shot, right? Right. And to see if I can even do this as an artist, not just a guitar player playing for somebody else or another band, but like just for myself. And so. I went to Cam. He's a producer on this one. Uh, he did Memphis May Fire, Woe Is Me, uh, some other heavier bands that that influence uh, my sound. And I'm like, Cam, here's my short list of uh, singles. Obviously, we'll probably do some originals together. Right. But here's a short list of singles. I mean, you know, covers that I want to like. I'd like to do. What do you want to do? Because like, I'm I'm really leaning heavy in on my producer on this one. Because I'm just like I'm I'm as an artist, I'm like kind of new to the to the game. So, <laughs> Jeez. And um get, sorry about that. That just scared the living crap out of me. Oh no, it's okay. Um and I'm just like, we have to we have to if we're gonna do this, he gravitated toward Kiss from a Rose pretty quickly. And I'm like, and we gotta it's gotta be a departure from the original because you know, kind of the lead up to this, I'd done a whole lot of research uh on who's released a version of this song and there's a lot out there actually you know come to find out and you know i comb through almost all of them the ones that really like mattered like the the heavier rock or right. something like that and there were some good ones don't get me wrong there there were some good ones i came across but what i found was um that if it wasn't heavy it was just a copy and paste 
of the original arrangement and you just put some heavy guitars on it. And I just found that to not be too original or just kind of boring, if you will. I don't, I mean, it, the it, songs that these other bands have covered were fine. It just didn't do much for me. Right. And I'm like, okay, Cam, if we're going to do this, we have to do it differently, but still have the same framework. And now that it's out, I believe, I believe that, you know, we accomplished that because some of that stuff that you just don't expect from that song, especially right. some of the, the drum parts in there has kind of some, some really, like you said, thrashy, maybe, you know, borderline black metalish in there to, to an extent. And I was really blown away what we kind of came up with. Cause I had one idea and when you have more than, you know, if you have a couple of, you know, minds and ears together, maybe a few, uh, you can really turn something in to uh, something you didn't even expect, Bruce. Right. And that's what happened with this song. I was totally blown away with what uh, Cam and, and the team that we developed uh, around this song came up with. And uh, dude, it's, it's not, it's a departure, but still has a framework. You know, we noticed that you know, we didn't do the the second verse over again. Right. Like I was at first I was like, man, we got to do this. We still did it. And, you know, as we kind of talk back and forth about it, it's just like, it didn't make sense, especially with, a, you know, short attention spans nowadays. Oh my so God. We, yes. We cut, cut that out. That's not, uh, you know, it's not needed. So we just went about it differently. We had a breakdown in there. There's no breakdown in the original or many or other covers. Like we put a breakdown in there, dude. And right. You know, it's not the heaviest, but dude, it's heavy. What's been the response so far? Uh, you know what? Um, the, the response so far has been positive and, um, I've gotten several comments like, you know, for, for example, like this, this is, this is some heavy shit, you know, like, uh, I'm like, you're right. It is like, but when you put something out for that, I have three other songs besides this one so far, but when this is like my, like my pop-off song, right. My launch song, uh, in my opinion. And mm -hmm. I've, from other interviews that I've done and other people I've talked to, I've gotten, nothing but positive feedback. And I'm totally open to, if it sucks, man, just tell me, you know, like ultimately what's, what's important for me is I make music that I want to listen to and hopefully others uh, will like that same style and, and storyline, that type of thing, whatever that might be. But it's important to me just to put out, you know, music that, that is, that's catchy obviously, but has some substance behind it. And now that I'm a little older, in my, in my life. I'm not in my twenties anymore. Uh, I feel like I got a little more life experience under my belt and I'm not just writing songs that sound like gibberish. Right. <laughs> if you will, there's a lot of, you know, heavy bands that that's just all they do is like, what's that's cool. Like a great guitar playing, you know, nice syncopation in drums, but where's the, you know, the meat to these songs. And that's what I want to, want to do with, with fire berries. Do you, uh, when you said you Originally, when we started talking, you said it's very theatrical. So are you writing like with a, a stage in mind or a production in mind or? I, lo I love these, these prompt questions. I love like how you do this. So yes, I, whenever I write songs, a couple things happen. Um, I am writing for the live show and how I envision, you know, the live show being for those people that decide to attend. Like music to me nowadays, it's not like it was 10, 15 years ago where you got to have you know, four or five guys that has to get together in a room and put ideas down. It's like, not like that anymore. But, but for me, now that the the whole music landscape of creation has changed, uh, it's, it's, I come about it as like, music is the gateway to get you in. And if you like the music, then, oh, welcome to Fireberries. This is what you're going to get. You're going to have a great live show that would be produced very cinematically. Uh, more of an experience, if you will, Bruce, is what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get at. Right. Um, but I do. So you can I, envision like a theatrical thing going with it. I do, man. I, I do. And I hope that I, I get to the opportunity um, to put that vision out there because like my, my background besides music is audio visual and it, right. So technology. So I, you know, I'm, I, I know kind of what's out there as far as technology with lights and sound and stuff like that. And I'm like, I want to harness all the stuff that I know about when it comes to audio visual uh, and implement it into my show from, you know, programming lights to, you know, it's just an experience, Bruce, you know, like uh, that's how I approach my songwriting is, how do I want people to feel one when they see whatever on their screen, music, video, what they hear via song, but when they come and they get to interact with me and, and, and whatever 
guys and girls, you know, decide to to play in the band with right. me. Uh, I want that to be something that's memorable, right? And I need to write music that one is memorable and the show is memorable. Sure, I agree. So with that being said, then, is there a message or a takeaway you, fan, you want your fans to walk away from after listening to, I mean, not necessarily Kiss of Rose, but, you know, your Fire of Aries releases or songs? Yeah, I, I, I want people to expect this, that um, it's going to be, music is going to be positive, uh, and not in the cheesy sense, like, cause you know, the trend right now is positivity, positivity. I believe in that wholeheartedly, but, uh, it's got to come from a sincere spot and it does for me. It, it really does. Uh, also within that, I want to be able to just write music about stories, whether they be true or somewhat fictional, uh, you know, I, I grew up in the country here. I'm kind of, I'm a native to Tennessee. I would love to write some heavy um, you know, country esque songs. Like I know I'm going to stay in my lane, but you know, I'm in, I'm in music city here and I just want to be like, Hey, I'm living on the outskirts over here. I'm on the outskirts of country music. Just to let y'all know I'm here right. you know, with some songs that, that I put out. And I think that's what I'm starting to see too, with like, you know, Brantley Gilbert going on tour with five finger death punch. And then now he's about, they're about to go on tour with Nickelback. I'm like, you're seeing like this country, you know, rock kind of, uh, fusion in a fusion in a way when it comes to shows it's been so heavy on pop country and pop rock that well it's maybe it's hard rock metals turn to to do something uh in 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 that vein not not all the time just like here and there right we don't want to overdo it like pop country is doing and pop rock it's just here and there just like oh that's different i want to i want to go to that show just to hear that like some outlaw metal some outlaw metal. Like I got this playlist on Apple Music. It's like it's called Dark Country, right? Oh, nice. Um, and it, that that sums up like if I had a vibe about my music, it'll have that that dark country outlawish, but with kind of a I have to say kind of I don't want to say poppy because I know that's kind of in the metal realm. Like pop's kind of like don't we don't do pop over here, but you know I like my metal and my hard rock to one, have a a little bit of a dancey element to it where I can vibe, I can have a good time, but also uh, just like saturated guitars. Like, you know, I'm a Nickelback fan and and I think they're a great band. Uh, They have a great guitar tone. Uh, And so do many, uh, you know, other bands that I like, like Seven Dust, Metallica, uh, In Flames is another influence. Uh, uh, But I want to bring in you know, an experience, whether that be from a guitar player, people like me, vocalist, like I, I want them to come and enjoy different aspects of the show from you being a musician to just simply being a fan of music. Right. If you will. Sweet. So I'm going to ask you something totally off the, off of Let's my go. list, but you mentioned it. Why do you, and I'm a fan of Nickelback ahead of time, yeah. so, but why do you think Nickelback sort of has that sort of meme quality to them on either social media or in general? when you can't argue with the numbers and their stats, right? It's, it's so easy. That's, a, that's the easiest question to answer. The internet calls people to hate Nick, Nickelback. And it was from that Comedy Central little bit that aired late night. I forgot the comedian's name. He just had mentioned that in a conversation or something like, to, to the group, uh, can't hold me to this uh, exactly verbatim, but basically he said that if he had to listen to a Nickelback song, he'd kill himself, right? And that was just a in passing joke on Comedy Central, right. but that like took off, and that's about when the internet and social media were kind of like really revving up, and you could like, oh, I can say this without really any repercussions, or you know, and the influence kind of came in there. So that's they rode the wave. They they love that. You I know? mean, their sales, you know, shut all the haters up in a second. They're the top yeah. of the heap, pretty much. Even, you know, from, from a sales point, absolutely. But if you, as a musician, if you really dig into Chad's, like the music that he writes with Ryan and, and the rest of the boys, like there's substance there, right? There, you, like he writes songs that you can visually imagine in your, in your head most of the time. So I'm going to interrupt you. Okay. Photograph. Holy shit, man. That song, every time I listen to it, you know, I'm yeah. back in high school. I could picture every bit of it hanging yeah. out in the arcade, all of that. That say so that's like that is what I believe music fans want. They need to they need to have music that they can that can invoke past memories. Because ultimately, what we're doing as adults, Bruce, is we're chasing our childhood. 
Let's yeah. be let's just be let's be real here. Like yeah. I got knickknack stuff all around here. Me too. <laughs> like Power <laughs> right. Rangers and stuff. Like I'm 30 year old, like right. 37 years old, dude. Like I still look for those little things that remind me of my childhood and I want that to be a part. And music is a part of that. It's sort of like well. a hard rock Springsteen almost, right? Because you can relate to everything Springsteen says too. Exactly. Right. So like, and he's still going strong and he can put yeah. on those four hour shows. Like it's nothing. I'm but, immediately down on the side of the river. When I put that song on, it's, it's absolutely insane. It's insane. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm just kind of getting back to, you know, what all this is fire Aries. It's, it's really a culmination of an experience, man. And I've, I've been deep into the metal, you know, sector, if you will, or community for, many years pretty much since i would say late high school and um i just i just want to get deeper i want i want more of a a community around the music it's it's more just about you know having something to do and people to hang out with is am i right that's what we kind of oh, yeah. we go to the shows to see our favorite bands yes, but at but the same time there's like this subconscious like belonging yes and uh I, I i i desire that and i want it not to be like not a selfish thing but you know i i want that to kind of be focused around the music that i make is that that community and people you know come yeah, to the show or see me out and you know they ha we have that connection through the music and that's it simple yeah you said so much there though so the the metal community the hard rock the heavier music community whatever you want to call it yeah. is definitely a community and a family and it's Unlike anything else, I think you'll find in pop yeah, music dude. or country it's music. Different. I don't think you get that, but in the metal world, you do. You bond over a riff or something, and it's like, holy shit! You're like, I've known you forever. Hundred percent, man. Like it's different. Even like, you know, growing up in Tennessee and being a country boy and all that stuff. Even going to like country concerts, uh, it's just different when you go to a hard rock metal. It's like, like it's more like I got your back type of community, right. and, and it doesn't matter, you, bro. No, and everybody overlooks. It doesn't matter what your race, sex, exactly. religion, preference, whatever. It doesn't matter binary, not whatever any of that stuff is. It makes yeah. no difference at all. We bond over a riff, and you're right. You got you back. Yeah, I, I just it's just different. I, I know when I was coming up through, you know, high school and college, like I felt like rock and metal was like on a high. Yes. I mean, like I was I, always anticipating the next Mudvayne record or the next Bullet from My Valentine, you know, mm -hmm. song to come out, whatever that might be. And, you know, I've, and since I would say 2000, let's say eight or nine, it's kind of it's kind of dipped like the the, the attention and it's not really been there. Uh, and I think it's 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 starting to come start that that wave is starting to, to rise yeah. again uh you know i think covid's helped in in a way like every musician on the planet almost got to take a break for two years uh, you know what i'm saying right and got to reassess like dang now i got to fully put on the brakes and reassess like what is this music thing yeah i miss going and doing my shows and things like that but we really got to analyze how we can do music difference. Like everybody did a live stream of a, of a show most did that, that had the capabilities. That was great. That opened up a whole nother like Avenue to connect with fans when you, when you, right. when you can't right? like, when did you catch a live stream of a band? No, you went to the show, but when you can't, right. what do we do? And we, we adapted as the, the music, the, mm -hmm. the metal community, we, we made it happen. We still, you know, stay connected to our fans, or at least we tried. And uh, that's what's important to me. It's just that community and connection. All right. And I'm going to go back one more time to what you said again. Um, no. You got into metal or heavier stuff at, in your teens. What was the gateway record or band? Let me tell you, I can tell you exactly what I can is. too. Go uh, ahead. So uh, I can tell you exactly the time where I re it really set in. But prior to that, it was, it was high school, probably junior-ish year. You know, I discovered the band Creed, right? And my, my big, biggest guitar influence at the time was Mark Tremonti. He still is. He's my number two. Uh, Andy James has now surpassed him as my, you know, guitar idol, if you will, because Andy's just great. Anyway, where it really defined for me was, um, I, hope I, I hope I got the right movie, but if you remember Freddy versus Jason, that movie that came out. Oh yeah. All right, no, hang on. It was it was twofold. It was Freddy versus Jason and Resident Evil Apocalypse. Okay, I don't think I've ever seen that. But which one? I don't think I've ever seen anything Resident Evil. 
Oh, damn. Bro. Okay. <laughs> Am I missing something? Okay. You're, you're, so what happened uh, at the end of Resident Evil Apocalypse, it was the, it was the credits, right? The movie's done. Mm-hmm. And then Kill Switch Engage came on with oh. Rose of Sharon, dude. That's a great, great song. And I'm like, what, what is this? Like, it was scary for me, um, you know, at the time. Like, I love, I love the games. The Resident Evil was based off a video game, right? Right. Uh, and they did a movie on it. And at the end, like, they just opened up with, you know, that, that scream from Howard. I'm like, this has got energy to it. Yes. And then I think the, the, the other culminating part might've been like the same year as when Freddy versus Jason came out. And at the end of that one, and those credits, it was a Slipknot song. I'm trying oh. to remember which one it was, but it was the, kind of like those two bands kind of like hit me all at once in like the same year or very close together. I'm just like, right. that's uh, what I want to feel. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to, gradually and slowly do this and maybe ramp up faster over time. But right. that was my gateway was, uh, was those, those soundtracks. It's funny because, and it's funny. Everybody remembers that because like, I remember being in high school, similar to you, but probably 20 years earlier or whatever Potentially. corner store by the high school sold records. And I walked in there one day and saw diary of a madman on the shelf and was like, there you wow, go. I never heard of Ozzy before, but I'm going to give it a shot. And then the first note, you know, those drums yeah. coming in from over the mountain, that's it. It said, I'm set me on a course you. that I never would have imagined. And look at you now where here we are talking on zoom. We're doing right. an interview. Like see how, see how music's connected us, dude. Like we don't Crazy. know each other from, from right. Adam. And you know, that's definitely bringing us together. Uh, that, that, that's what it's about, dude. Just, it's just a, a belonging. And if, it, if the music's good, great, but you know, it's, that's what us as humans always want is yeah. that some type of connection. So what's the plan for taking uh fire rarities on the road or is there? There is uh, a very loose plan right now. Uh, <laughs> what my main focus right now is uh, building a few more uh, songs or adding uh, some more songs to the catalog. Mm-hmm. Right now, I have four out. Um, yeah, 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 four. So, uh, Kiss from Rose is the fourth one. I, I think I got two in the hopper uh, right now. No, three more that'll should be out. So I'm going to try. I, I'm doing the approach of singles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just think that's just better workflow for me. So, you know, I'll put out probably three to four more songs this year uh, and see how they do. And then 2024 comes around and we'll see, you know, what I can jump on with some, hopefully some of my favorite artists that I went to shows to see. I really would love to open up for an altar bridge or I just went and saw them uh, last week. Oh, really? Or, you know, a seven to something. Like to me, that's, you know, when artists like, well, they get asked a question, when do you think that you made it? And for me, it will be like, well, once I get to open up for, you know, one of my favorite bands, if not all of them, that's right. what I would, would love to do. And I would, and I would be satisfied for, you know, here on out. If I got to, if I got to do something like it's that. It's hard to define what made it means maybe nowadays, Sometimes. right? Because there's no, there's hardly any arena shows and, multi-platinum records and any of that stuff yeah um i mean if, if we want to get into like nitty-gritty of making it it's like i saw a, a recent interview with nickelback it's like they don't have to like they don't have to make any more music and they can live the, they don't worry about money anymore right? right that's making it to a degree that's a milestone right like i think right. every artist has different milestones and right now that's mine if i just got to open up for you know, you know, a few of my favorite bands, I would feel accomplished. Right. Right. now, right. I'm just making music that I hope sticks somewhere and, you know, has an impact somewhere. Means but, something uh, to somebody. You know, yeah. You know, and, and ultimately that's what it's about. If, if the music, if I spend all this money making these songs and it, you know, only impacts one person, well, maybe that's a very expensive impact, but at least it, it, it did something hopefully positive in the right. world. Right. And you have no idea what it could have done to that person. And that's the beauty in it. Could have pulled them from the grips, right? Yeah. Uh, and and I kind of long for that, you know, for getting like the psychology of music. Like I look forward to, you know, you know, I hope this happens where, you know, I put out a song that has some sort of meaning or some imagery and, you know, a person comes in like that song really helped me through this time or, you know, really made me think about things differently or you really painted a picture on like this possible reality that I didn't know existed. Like, it's just it's more of a conversa- conversation starters, uh, right. and hopefully from there it 
you know, blossoms into more like friendship relationship type of things where, you know, I can continue to make more music and have more experiences for right. man. That's really what it is. It's just like, what experience can I give the listeners uh, that would make them want to come hang out with me and, and, and see the shows. Sweet. That's going to bring me to the end of my questions. I hope that wasn't too bad. I know we were all over oh, the place, but they were, if you, if you have more questions, I'll keep going. I, I, I like, I like, I like chatting. So I have found that the episodes, if they're anything over 30, Oh yeah. People do not. We were talking about attention spans earlier with singles and that sort of stuff. And yep. the numbers drop like half when we're, if I don't keep it below 30. So I even have to edit sometimes because that's smart. You got it. You got to keep going with what people uh, like my son's age. They don't want anything to do with, you know, I want three minutes and then maybe 30 yep. seconds of that three minutes and I'm moving on to something else. That's right. But me and you, we, we like the, we like the, the nuts and bolts of things. I mean, we can talk about this like, all day long, right? We talk about gear and records and the whole deal. Yeah, that might be uh, uh, something for an in, like a in person type of deal. Absolutely, say uh, so, so something to look forward to. Yeah, we can get on here and use social media and all the tools we have. Yep. To to put out our content or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's just a different experience when you're in person. You can talk about stuff that maybe half the population doesn't care about, like gear and guitar right. strings and pickups and drum heads and see whatever. I can go on. But anyway, you know, thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. You got it, man. Anything it was a pleasure talking to you. Be Same well. Here. Talk to you, you soon, soon man. Bye. All right, cheers.